Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Somers Town Board work session, starting here tonight at uh, 6 at 7:05 on Thursday, October 6th. Um, I'd like to start by opening up our, our public comment. Can I get a motion to open a public comment? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Is there anybody here for public comment? Is there anybody out there on Zoom? Nope. Rob, did we want okay. to pledge on the work sessions, mm -hmm. or do we want to pledge on the work no. sessions? No. Nope. Okay, so if there's no one here for public comment this evening, I'd like to make a motion to close public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. So let's go to the uh, town board. So I'd like to give an update to uh, the town of Somers uh, for COVID-19 update. Uh, and this is as of yesterday. The numbers were uh, 57 active cases. Uh, and there's only one new case as of yesterday, Ooh, good. which is uh, very good to see. So um, we were hovering around around 125, I think, a couple couple months ago, 120, 100. Uh, so it's come off pretty good. So mm. that is that is good to see. Mr. Supervisor, I'm proud to say, got my new my flu shot and my COVID shot, same time, two different arms. Everything worked out perfect. Very nice. So they Glad encourage you. everybody to do that. Glad so that makes you third. Is, is that a third booster? Is that what that is? A third one? I don't know. I guess. Uh, I don't know. I think it's up to three. Yeah. I think actually, if you had all. And anyway, then, it was painless. Very nice. <laughs> so let's uh, go on here. So I'd like to um, give an update here on the double utility poles in town. Um, Councilman Sirico, if you'd like to give us an update here on the. On that? So, uh, just by way of background, this, uh, you know, I think Rick, prior supervisor, you know, uh, started this initiative. It, it, it was part of the ESI East uh, storm process where, um, you know, we petitioned uh, NYSEG and successfully uh, were able to get them to fortify our network down here in Somers. And part of that fortification is to change the poles and, you know, essentially uh, make sure that they can handle, uh, you know, the, the weather. In doing that, they put up one pole and they, and they had the other poles in place. And so the pole goes in. NYSEG is the first to move, right? They're, yep. they're yep. wires. They're on top. They're on the top. And then as we've learned that you have all the other carriers that are there and um, they, have to, they have to go through a process of each one moving the wires and, and onto the new pole and yep. then the old pole comes down. Well, the, la the last person to put their wires on is the right. one who's responsible for moving the pole. So lo and behold, this is not a high priority for them and you know the two poles were all over the town and so we got all the carriers together and we said, look, uh, you know, let's start an initiative to uh, to work work through this, and let's try to throw some visibility on this. And so we're meeting every quarter, and we're going through the process, and they're making they're making headway. They're making headway. It takes uh, you know it takes all the you know Altis, Verizon, um, NYSEG, and and there are all third other carriers as well mm -hmm. that are on those poles. So you know we meet. You know, we have an inventory of what's there, and they discuss, you know, how they've uh, how they've worked, you know, worked their process, and, what, and the number of poles that have come down. So they, they, without going through the specific numbers, they are making progress, but there's still, you know, quite a bit more to do. Yeah, quite a bit more poles still to do, but they are making some real good headway, and uh, which is nice. They're all talking to each other, so that's what we want to see, and that's what we'll continue to do is have our, our of our meetings with them every quarter. And uh, as we uh, have some more information and updates, we'll be more to share that with everybody else. And that brings me to my next thing, uh, our telecommunications task force. So, uh, and then Councilman Sirico, if you'd like to give another update on that as well. So this is something that I've been working on with, uh, with Bill. Um, again, this is part of the, uh, you know, the Altis, uh, you know, this is part of the East IES, you know, initiative when everything went down. And, uh, you know, we're working on, uh, you know, process to ensure that their service levels are, you know, where they're at. And so, uh, as part of this, you know, they've told us that they're going to Altice, is they're going to upgrade the network. They're under a process of, of uh, going to, uh, you know, move their network to a fiber optic network up in the northern uh, area up here. Their plan calls for 2023. Um, they're running into some difficulties based on the conversations that I've had with them, but they still owe us a meeting and a presentation to show us the rollout. 
which they haven't really, uh, you know, really haven't come to come to the table. So, was there any deadline that we talked about for that? I, we know they owe us. We know it's past due, but uh, well, we've asked them. You know, this is like proprietary information. <laughs> they just don't like to hold this, hold a lot of that information out. What they have disclosed to me is that, um, and you know, I, you know, they're telling me the permitting process has been reworked and it's taking longer to get uh, permits through the DOT. You know, and uh, this has to do with, you know, rights away and all that. And I asked whether we can be of help in that regard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got to reconvene and see if we can, you know, shake some trees there. But, you know, apparently what had happened is there were probably an accident that had taken place and it became a safety issue. And so they decided to, the DOT essentially decided to, you know, slow things down for, for the permitting of, of, the, of this. What it takes is, is that, you know, there's end offices, and the main end office right now is in um, Katona. And so they have to come up the rights away, all the main thoroughfares, and then branch out. And so they got to get in, in a situation where they have to, you know, be in the main, mainstream traffic and schedule all of that. So that's, uh, you know, that's one aspect of, um, you know, what was going on. The other thing is cityscape. If everybody remembers, uh, the town took a survey regarding, uh, you know, uh, cell towers and coverage and preferences. I spoke to cityscape, uh, you know, last week. Um, they are going to have their uh, strategic, their, you know, their plan um, this month. So she's looking to get this out in the next few weeks and maybe come up and, and talk to us about it. Uh, essentially, this is going to be a plan that's going to incorporate all the northern towns, so there'll be specific information in each for each one of the towns, and uh, Somers will be one of them. Mm -hmm. And so that's uh, you know that's a positive thing. And so so that's, have a detailed map for us, right? Though we'll detailed maps and, and so on, and so we'll take it from there. Great. All right, so that's it. We're moving forward, uh, you know, on all of that. And also, I just want to say the supervisor's office continues to take complaints that escalate, ex escalated complaints that, you know, Altice is not essentially servicing or they're having mm -hmm. our, our customers or our residents are having difficulty getting past, uh, you know, some of their uh, customer service, um, you know, requests. And there are some problems that are, are chronic and lingering. Um, the calls come into the office and we escalated through you know, our folks that we have down there. There are a number of them that are out there right now. Now, when they do come in and talk to us with an update, um, hopefully we'll have a chance, right, to, to help set that agenda before they get here. Yeah, of course. So that we know what the statistics are, what the key performance indicators and metrics are, and hopefully there's some progress that we can congratulate them on. Well, the key here is really to get fiber optic service to replace the cable service that's in, that, that comes to your home. And uh, that, from their point of view, is a, an investment. Mm -hmm. To run a network that's fiber optic is, um, they, they call it a passive network. There are less points of failure. So there's more resiliency there. That's, that, we want that, right? Because storm processes and so on, we want to be able to handle that and get restoration. Plus, from a service point of view, I mean, you know, as just the industry and as the communities move from, uh, you know, cable type package per, you know, services to, to streaming services, um, you know, this is the type of type of uh, technology that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Did you want me to rail against the uh, cable companies again? Absolutely. All them dinosaurs. Isn't Absolutely. <laughs> but they are. <laughs> they want to pay attention. If you want to put a resolution together, we'll, we can do that. The thing is, these are now, in effect, public utilities. And as we saw during COVID, the ability to have internet, let alone TV, is not a necessity unless the Yankees are on. But they're not a necessity. But it all comes together. You're right. And it should all be streamlined. And it's just not, it is, a, we're going to talk about government regulation over a utility company later. But this is, in effect, the same thing, and they skirt those regulations, at least in terms of delivery of the services, not necessarily the placement of the poles or all that stuff. That is, is regulated. But I just can never get over how poorly done it is. And I'm 
maybe I'm not being fair, but that certainly is my personal experience and everyone that I talk to in every community in the United States. And I've talked to everyone in every community. <laughs> a lot of people. Well, yeah. you know, I'm Richard, busy. this is a this is really does not fall under our purview. No, it, or it our That's the frustrating part. Right? The, you know, there there are state and local, uh, you know, state and federal agencies that are to do this type of work, but you know, these are our, our citizens and our community, and we're <clears> relying on these types of services that we need. You know, electric services and and uh, you know, internet services. And, well, and we want to make sure that th they're investing properly in the networks to make sure that, you know, the service levels are, are at a level that meet their commitments to us. It's not the most important thing, obviously, government does is, is this. There's obviously so many things in the world. But for 56 years, it, this industry has operated under the same federal laws from 1996. And you would think somewhere along the line, somebody would have had a better idea. John McCain did, he proposed several times, and some other senators certainly have. They've gone nowhere, but it is, um, you know, it, it, it is something, I'm so glad that you guys are, are on this and you're keeping the pressure on, at least from the point of view of our people in Somers, uh, but it is a very frustrating issue. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, you know, we, this may not be in our purview, but we can help shine the light on this issue yeah, I agree with for you. those people whose purview it is. Yes, right. good point. Yeah, so we're using the power of the office, and also we're, co we're coordinating with other towns and, and the county as well. It takes time and effort, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of the squeaky wheel gets the grease. We're holding them accountable. I mean, essentially, you know, with the polls, I mean, really? I mean, you know, it's not under our auspices, but you look out oh, there, it's work that's not done. There's some safety issues around some of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look, these guys... You know, they got other things to do, and it's a budget, right? So the last thing on their list to do is to take that wire and move it to the next pole. You know, they have other things to do. They can't even meet their service levels to keep customers happy. So you got to, you, you have to call them to the, call them to the table, mm -hmm. and hold them accountable. And um, and I think you know, that's that a works. great strategy because even if it's they're not not their top priority, it's got to be on their list somewhere. And by us keeping them. Uh, true to, 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 to keeping them accountable, it, it stays on the priority list somewhere and gets gotten to eventually as opposed to never. So we're, you know, we're trying to express to them that it's a priority for us. We're going to make the investment in time in doing this and, you know, it's working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, here's the thing. Comcast is in, what, 48 states, 47 states, 49 states, something like that. You know, so the amount of time that that particular company will pay uh, attention paid to Selmer's is so little that, yes, I applaud your efforts and never give up like Sisyphus rolling the stone up the hill. Never give up even when it keeps rolling down. And so we are, it's, it's David versus Goliath here. But I just can't believe that on the federal level we don't have more attention being paid to what is basically an unregulated industry. But uh, I mean, I'll give you an example where we made impact with you know, Altice. Altice was bought by an international company. They, when they did that, they organized it in one silo. So every decision was being made at the top, and no matter what geography it was, it's the priority across the entire enterprise. Well, that wasn't working because smaller towns weren't getting the attention, right? Yeah. So they actually reorganized. You know, they essentially created, you know, a, a, you know, a Westchester, you know, a organization. Good. And they have their operations teams that are responsible for Westchester metrics. And so, you know, Things have gotten a little bit better. Not perfect, but right. yeah. well, we'll keep we'll keep, the, keep uh, the the pressure on them. All right. So that brings me to uh, number four: um, permitted signs in town. We get a lot of phone calls uh, to the supervisor's office um, asking about the permitted signs here in town, and uh, especially as we are getting uh, closer to election day. Uh, I just want to give uh, the people of the town what is permitted and what is not. So I'll just give the, the abbreviated version of it. Signs on residential property, private property. So signs on residential private property, no matter the content, are protected by the First Amendment. Signs on public property, including right of way, shoulders along roads, which are unauthorized, no matter the content, are illegal and can be removed by the town. 
So hopefully that gives uh, some people some color on what is allowed and what is not allowed. Uh, we do have a code enforcement officer that uh, does circulate the town on Tuesday evenings uh, to go and, and see if, um, if there are, are signs that are not permitted in, in certain spaces. Um, but, the te but those signs that are on your private property, no matter what the content, are, are protected by the First Amendment. What about on state roads? So state roads, I know we've had this. Um, Roland, do you have something about the state roads that are for the sign usage? The state uh, uh, allows the town to remove the signs along its right of way, and it too will remove them as, as it finds necessary. Okay. But the town is permitted along the state roads to do that. Correct. Correct. And generally what most municipalities do is they store the signs at the highway department. They don't dispose of them. Right. Yep. And the, uh, uh, the person who owns the signs is told where they are and they can go and pick them up. Yep. Is there no way to make that a little bit less easy? I, can there be a penalty? You want the signs back? We, we spent man hours, we spent gasoline, whatever it is, to do that and store them. Don't we deserve some sort of compensation for that? Does the law allow, whether we should or we should not be summoned? Does the law allow that compensation? No. No, the only way you could get compensated would be if you uh, uh, summoned them into court and they were fined. And is that ever That's done, to your knowledge, on the town level? Not, not generally. But it could be. It could be, but. That's kind of going down a, a deep, dark hole. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say. <laughs> so I just want to give a... Go ahead. you have something else? I, I just want to add on the... Uh, so no one misunderstands when you say you could put a sign on your property for, for anything. You know, obscenity, pornography, slander, uh, time, place, and manner. A, uh, a, uh, a 30 foot neon sign that blinks all night these sort of common sense uh, restrictions. There's no right that's absolute, including freedom of speech. So just so no one takes those words, you know, absolutely. And then in general, the right of way is what? Like 15 feet from the center of the, depending on the road, or how's that work, Roland? Well, the road right of way is generally 50 feet. But the extent of pavement is usually about 25 feet. So about 12 and a half feet on each shoulder is owned by the town. The problem is, is that the center line is not always the center of the pavement. So no. in close situations, whoever is going to represent the town in removing his signs really should try and look at a survey when he's unsure. You know, but but in general, I mean, the thought is is that if you you put them by the road, you know, essentially they're in violation. If you put them up by your door, you know, it's right. your property. But there's a there's a big gray area in between. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Thanks, Roland. Hmm. Back to my question. Yeah. So that brings us to number five here. Uh, consider adoption of resolution opposing the proposed May 1st, 2023 NYSIG rate increase. Uh, for some of the people who are unaware of, um, of this, NYSIG proposes to increase its electricity delivery revenues by approximately 274 million, a 31% increase in base delivery revenues or a 6.8% increase in total revenues and its natural gas delivery revenues by approximately 43.4 million, a 19% increase in base delivery revenues or a 9.8% increase in total revenues. Uh, I'd like to just open it up here for a little bit of a discussion if you guys would like to uh, speak on this. Um, Do you want to read the resolution first? And yeah, we can, I can read the resolution here. And then we can here. talk about the context. Sure, so here's the resolution that uh, Town Board came up with, whereas we the Town Board members of the Town of Somers are responsible for overseeing the functioning, well-being, and affordability 
uh, our town, and whereas the Public Service Commission has authorized NYSEG generous rate increases over the past three years to fund the backlog for the tree trimming program, increase in manpower, inventories, and modernization of network to improve network sustainability and resilience. And whereas the New York State Electric and Gas has pending rate case before the New York State Public Service Commission, and whereas this increase is scheduled to go into effect on May 1st, 2023, and whereas NYSEG has proposed to increase its electric delivery revenues by approximately 274 million, which equates to 31% increase in base delivery or 16.8% increase in total revenues, and whereas we find it unfortunate that the PSC is presented with this request at a time when public has absorbed increases for the delivery of supply of electricity and have been compounded by the untimely decommission of Indian Point, unplanned supply constraints, and geopolitical events. And whereas the requests for the increase do not consider rising costs of affordability of, ele of electricity production and delivery, which has already <coughs> placed an enormous burden on our seniors, residents, and businesses within our community. And be it resolved, the town board urges the Public Service Commission to reject the significant increase as proposed by NYSEG. And be it further resolved, the town of Somers calls for a comprehensive long-range energy plan for the region, county, and town that includes sustainability and affordability as its foundations. So, um, well, what this I like is another, there's another thing that we don't have mm -hmm. governance over. Okay, I would say personally, not personally, I'm just saying just as in my role, I mean, we've, heard, we've gotten so many complaints about, you know, some of the increases that uh, everybody was experiencing, you know, during the winter. And, uh, you know, people feel helpless. People feel helpless. And so this is our effort to advocate on their behalf as a matter of process Public Service Commission is going to reduce, re review this, and uh, use their benchmarks yep. and so, and their expertise to determine, you know, whether the, these increases are appropriate. Yeah, and just to say that, you know, the the people have a voice here in this thing. There is uh, there is a virtual public uh, statement hearing. So there is one that's going to be taking place on Tuesday, October 18th, um, and that is at 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. that you'll be able to uh, make a public statement. And if you need some more information on that, so residents can go to our website for the link to register for those public hearings if you would like to make your, your voice heard. I would assume you have to register and get in some sort of line. Yeah. Correct, yes, yeah. so you, yes, you'll have to get in some, in some line to right. speak. Uh, the, actually, those wishing to comment on any aspect of, of these proceedings will have the opportunity to make a statement on the record at the virtual public statement hearing. Any person wishing to provide a public statement must pre-register the day before the relevant hearing. So you need to register before the hearing uh, to make a, a public statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what I'm hearing is the same thing you guys are hearing from our, our friends and neighbors. You know, there's, there's a very, very inconsistent um, way of, of us getting billed um, and people have called us and accurately said that you know there was a hundred percent swing two hundred percent swing month over month um, and, you know and that to me says you know to NYSIG well you know until you know what you're doing I'm really not sure why you could justify any sort of price increase why don't you sort of level level things off first come up with a long-term plan and then we can see what might be available um, for a win-win um, but right now, they, they don't inspire a lot of confidence in terms of their billing, um, which leads me to believe, well, they'll just charge the customer more, and that's my way out of my financial predicament, which seems a little intellectually lazy. Yeah, NYSIG is a regulated monopoly. There's only one company that delivers electricity to all of our houses. It would be ludicrous to have many companies with poles and and, and, and lines and wires and change one, one wire comes out, the other wire comes in, uh, you know, so, so the state says, no, we will grant certain companies certain 
the right to deliver, and they would ha they were the only company that can deliver within a certain geographic area. So there's several in New York State. We have NYSE, Con Edison Blow, and Central Hudson, and others like that. So they have that monopoly, which the state can pull out. Uh, and so then there's the, they deliver the electricity. Where we get it from is the energy supplier, which could be through NYSEC, but it could do, be through a variety of places, uh, companies, Constellation, if you're the, in the Community Choice Aggregation Program, but you could buy it basically from anyone, who, and then NYSEC delivers that electricity to your house. They're talking about the, the delivery charge here. Now, with uh, Tom Garrity, I shared the, the uh, NYSEC task force, and we met in this room mm -hmm. for really probably two years periodically with several of our citizens out there. We had a committee of about, I guess, 18 or so. Uh, some people were very well versed on, knew far more than the rest of us and, and asked great questions. And during that, those meetings, I remember early on saying, to, as, as the two NYSEG representatives were basically saying, we. We can't do better. Things happen. Weather occurs. 60% of outages, which is what people's main complaint was, of course, it, it were because trees coming down, and we can't do anything about that. And one time I was really frustrated, and I said, you know, if you can't do any better, why are we here? Let's just all walk out. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that spurred any uh, urgency on their part, but they did change ownership during that time. And then they did try to make, I think, an effort to do better because there are more outages in this area, what's known as the Brewster Division, than any other division in the state. And they knew that. And, and Somers, Yorktown, Lewisboro, North Salem were the areas particularly hard hit. Maybe because we have more trees, maybe it's just bad luck, who knows. But we did, we're at the end of we, the we would, we, we did suffer. Now, many people in that room, including myself, said, look, if money's a problem, I'll give you three, four, five bucks a month if you can do better. You know, if that's your problem, your five-year plan on trees and tree trimmings and everything like that, you let go, you say because of budgetary issues. So, you know, look, I'll do that. So when I look at this proposal, which affects the delivery charge, the dance that goes on in these things is that it's like buying a car, you know? They ask for a lot of money, you know you're gonna bargain them down, somewhere in the middle is where you're gonna come. We're bargaining a contract. We want this much, we'll give you this much, somewhere in the middle. And that's what they do with the PSC, the Public Service Commission in Albany, appointed by the governor, I, I believe, with the legislature. Um, their job is to oversee these regulated monopolies, such as NYSEG, and to review those increases that are asked for. Now, they're often uh, criticized because do they do the due diligence? Do they ask the hard questions? You know, none of us is in that room. It's hard to know. And so if this is to criticize the PSC or to urge them to do better, I'm all in favor of it. They are not going to get 30%. That's ridiculous. I would vote against that every day of the week. They believe what will happen is they'll, they can make a rate increase for only one year. There will be a compromise at the end. Okay, we'll give you something like 15% over three years, which comes out to about 5% or so a year, with something that I could live with. Now we're talking about you know, three bucks a month more. So this whole thing is part of really a dance that is done every couple of years between the PSC and regulated monopolies. And so I'm for it and I'm against it. <laughs> Just sound like a former presidential candidate. I'm for it and I'm against it because it's part of a system that is certainly anything but perfect. And it would be better if the, if the cable companies like Altice or Cablevision or Comcast had to <coughs> also be part of this, which they are not. I believe that they should be. So anyway, that's a little background on it, and just really kind of the whole thing is, is a, kind of a, a choreographed dance, like I say, that they go through, and it's a bit yeah. more of show than it is of something. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a choreographed dance. You're right about that, but you know, it it, uh, it warrants people's voices being heard uh, at the the virtual public, you know, statement hearings here. Again, that is Tuesday, October 18th yeah. uh, at 1 and at 5. There's two sessions. Uh, I would make your, your, your case, make your voice heard. That's what this is about. Uh, we're doing our small part as, as we can do to just show that we are, um, you know, we're not going to, we're trying to oversee this and, and we want the, the well-being and uh, for our townspeople. Um, so, you know, I, I would like to make a motion to 
uh, adopt the res resolution as I read into it. Um, Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so moved. Great. Thank you. All right, um, number six. Consider the recommendation of the following, the steps outlined in chapter 77 of the code of the town of Somers, unsafe buildings for the property located at five cottage place per memo dated September 28th, 2022 from Mike Dunbar, assistant building inspector. Uh, I would like to make a motion to follow the steps outlined in chapter 77. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay, number seven. Authorize the solicitation of bids uh, to purchase and install a platform lift in the townhouse meeting room per memo dated September 23rd, 2022 from Thomas J. Tuma Jr., uh, building inspector. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the solicitation of bids to purchase and install the platform. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so moved. Uh, number eight, authorize the solicitation of bids for a company to replace the flat roof of the townhouse per memo dated September 29th, 2022 from Thomas J. Tuma Jr., building inspector. Make a motion to solicit the bids for uh, replace the flat roof. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. And kudos, kudos for noticing that it needs some attention. <laughs> Before it's too late. If it didn't leak over the last couple of days, though, we're pretty lucky. We're pretty good. We've, went, we've gone up there and done a couple of patching to the roof. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's good that we're, uh, you know, addressing Stand this. Ahead of it. Flat roofs are very difficult, man. Right? Yeah. yeah, we had to get a, a pitch up there. I was actually uh, walking up on the roof the other day, and I just tried to stay away from some of the areas. Uh -huh. But um, uh, it's, a, it's an intricate process to, to, to replace the flat roof. So yeah. it's one of the cool things about getting up there and walking on the roof. <laughs> Uh, so number nine, authorize a solicitation for request for proposal for a company to provide exterior security, security for all town buildings per memo data September 30th, 2022 from Thomas J. Tuma Jr., uh, building inspector. I'd like to make a motion to, uh, for a second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay, uh, request approval to purchase uh, the municipality five laser fees integration add-ons offered through laser fees to allow the current software to tie into the town of Somers laser fees software in the amount of 7,400, mm -hmm. which includes training per memo dated September 12, 2022 from Thomas J. Tuma Jr., uh, building inspector. Uh, Patty, let's throw that on to the consensus agenda, please. Sure. So what is exactly that, that helps you, Patty? And, or is this just Help. the building department? It's Laser Fish is my program. It's okay. a records management program that right. started in my office. This will allow it to speak to their Municipality 5. Okay. So they all have access to Laser Fish. So they can pull it up in their system. Yes, yeah. but this will also give them a records management component so that they'll know what can be destroyed in a timely fashion. Not that they have records that can be destroyed. Does this allow, like, if I have a, you know, say, is might be a building, uh, let's say a building folder, and I'm l researching that, and I have to go to you to get something from the laser, so they can go out and they can see it. But can they earmark it? So now it's attached do, to it. Yeah, they can. Do, it, everything will like you put your property address in that. Everything, everything will come, come up. up. Yeah, and Inside hopefully it'll okay. tie it into the stuff planning and engineering has. Right. As well. Okay. So what do they do in these different departments the town has now? Do they literally just? walk from one office to another looking for it or if how do they like, get the same information well if it's on laser features it's already uploaded which is their responsibility they have access so on and so forth they can just go in and sign in onto laser fish and pull up their own documents and search on a, yeah, like they an have address access or something to like, most, like most of my documents and their own right I, I like building the idea. has access to planning vice versa I mean, there are departments that you know, to, we don't cross access. But it helps digitize the whole process yeah. and gets us off a of paper, which so is this, great. I yeah, think. but so does this tie this in? It'll help or talk to all that, the different is, departments is, which, yeah. which can talk to yeah. each other. Yes. It ties it's this in. It's a good in, step. But does it also laser fish? You know, so laser fish, so this is, how it's, this is how a salesperson will present it to you. Municipality 5 is your filing cabinets. Right. Laser fish is your archives. Right. So it allows them to see both okay in electronic format as long as they use it correctly how much of our archive, our archives are laser feast and how much are like just still paper 
<laughs> that's the that's the thing that we get at. Yeah. We have well, some, but when we you're dealing with a department like building department, that everything is accessible is not in the basement. Every document they have is in their office. But it's yeah. not laser fish. It's, it's, well, Marianne, I think, is working very is hard working to do that. that. that mm -hmm. Right. So that would be a, as she is in planning and engineering. Yeah. Right. And that would be, a, I mean, that's our goal, right? Right. right. Our goal. So that you can just pull it up rather than literally searching through files. Heaven forbid there's ever a fire. Correct. We did a bunch of planning and engineering files with a grant a few years ago. Right, I remember that. You know, we have files that go back from <laughs> You so nineteen, you <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, nineteen forty-five, right? I have eighteen hundreds. Yeah, eighteen, <laughs> right? So just over there, and they and they go back. But and the building look department at, cannot just put their stuff in the basement. They can't yeah. say this is inactive. Yeah. Nothing they have is inactive. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. also well, you have yeah. a builder comes in and he's looking at a lot and wants information. Does he have to go there, or can he just go online and get it? I mean, how does that work? You can't no. go online. No, you, you can't go it would, the person would still have to come to the building department to ask. That's a whole, for, to hold other, it's a whole other thing. Is that a foil or no? It's treated as a foil. Eventually, we'll, their goal is everything will be digitized and everything will be able to merge with the two programs. Yes. And do we have any time frame in which we think that would happen? And we're talking about this decade? Yeah, it's hard. Is there a decade. model community <laughs> municipality that, that you kind of know? <laughs> no. I, I don't know what their plans are. How's right. that? Okay. Well, well we know what the goal is. This, this is, is a step is. in the right direction. You know what the goal is. Yeah, we're, we're moving in the right direction. The line. We still have the plan. <laughs> we have the, we have the, uh, yes. You said run. Hand off, run. Hand just run, run, run. north. Run. Give it to your daughter. Yeah, she's they quick. Catch her. She's fast. Right. Them all. <laughs> um, great. So let's um, we move that to consensus agenda. Thank you. Um, number eleven, addition of zoning text amendments to the business historic preservation district. Um, and then number twelve, I also have the addition of zoning text amendments uh, to the community <coughs> shopping district. So um, to come talk about it a little bit, right? I have uh, Dave Smith, our town planner. Um, here, Dave, if you'd like to just talk about uh, 11 and 12, take 11 first. Sure. The Business Historic Preservation District and, and tell us what we're... Yeah, what are we doing? Okay. <laughs> Good evening. For the record, Dave Smith. Uh, so what you have before you <clears throat> uh, with uh, item 11 is the uh, proposed zoning text amendments to the Business Historic Preservation District. This effort started actually under your predecessor with a request to look at um, land uses within other historic districts in Westchester County um, because there's a concern about uh, the intensity of different types of uses within historic districts and whether they make sense, logical sense from a land use standpoint. So as part of the, the documentation that's been provided to you, we did a, uh, a desktop survey of historic districts within Westchester County uh, and we looked at, uh, there, for the most part, uh, they don't include, these historic districts don't include uh, kind of the typical retail, commercial types of uses. There are a couple uh, that we identified in um, Peekskill and Ossining, but we recognize that those are different settings and that while they may have some of the more intensive uses, they probably don't make sense in um, a setting like what you have here in the town of Somers and within your business historic preservation uh, district. So what we've uh, suggested in the way of um, zoning text amendments very uh, uh, briefly is that in, in one section where it talks about uh, restaurants, taverns, ice cream parlors, um, the exclusion of drive through restaurants. And I think part of that is a reflection of in this part of uh, the town, you have you've got two major highways, you've got a lot of activity going back and forth. Um, as a planner, one of the things that I like to do is I like to walk, and I like to walk between different places. So when I'm here in Town Hall, I'll walk down to uh, De Chico's, or I'll walk to the Chase Bank and walk around. And for the most part, it, it can be problematic. You know, you don't have the kind of the pedestrian circulation. So excluding some of these more auto-intensive uses is probably a, uh, a good thing from a planning standpoint. But this particular part of your community. So that's the first 
um, suggestion. The second one is uh, under retail stores, um, where it talks about um, the different types of uses. We're talking about excluding convenience retail uh, or convenience stores as a, as a use permitted within the BHP district. And again, it's the same thing because of the uh, extent of activity that those types of stores generates within, you know, from a traffic uh, and automobile standpoint. How do you define a con convenience store? Uh, there's actually a, um, uh, a memo clarifying that what a convenience store is that was provided by the, uh, the building inspector. And so that's what we've specifically used as a reference uh, for including or including this as an exclusion for uses within the So that'll be user. outlined in the code somewhere where you can reference it? Yes, we can. Yes. But that is our definition in Selmer is not necessarily some generally accepted Planning it, Association of New York uh, definition. Correct. That, that's, a, that's a local uh, definition that has been conferred by uh, the building inspector. And we assume that that has been, uh, we've used other towns to sort of compare it and make sure that we are in accordance with that, at least in a general way. Yes. yes. So I think that's important is to review that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. What is he, what's his per thought about that? Yeah, well, he, it, yeah, when, when he prepared that, that um, clarification, uh, it was with respect to, all right, so what is a retail store? And convenience stores fell within that uh, purview. So that's why we're excluding convenience stores under retail. Okay. That was his interpretation. Right. So in effect, what you have is, is a slight tweak in the, uh, the zoning text language, which eliminates some of the more auto-intensive uh, uses that would be um, that, are, that could be permitted under the code right now. Um, so that's, that's what you have before you. We've included <clears throat> an environmental assessment form, and we've included a, uh, a notice of uh, seeker action so that in the event that uh, you w would like to act tonight, schedule a public hearing, this can be circulated um, as soon as possible out to the other interested and involved agencies. Let me ask you a question. Some somewhat connected there. So is it, is it a business historic district because we have declared it to be such? Or are there other criteria? Because I mean, if someone drives through here, I'm not sure if someone's going to say, it's not like driving through Williamsburg, Virginia. Right. You know, where you say, oh, wow, that's historic. So it's, it's historic because there are historic elements within it that we have termed within some sort of radius Boundary. to be a business historic district. Am I right about that? Yeah, that's correct. The, the, the business historic preservation district is an actual zoning district itself. And my understanding is it was created because of kind of the historical context within this part of the town of Somers. Well, certainly this building. this building. Yes, this building is, is a prime example. But you have others, examples of kind of that historic architecture, the feel, uh, the, the layout of, uh, uh, of other buildings. And so I think the, the, the concept was that to keep the, um, to try and keep the um, atmosphere kind of the way it is, the way it has been, and if there's new development that it fits in within that context. Sure, sure. I mean, Katona does that. I know a friend who bought a house there, and there's certain colors you can make that house, right. and certain changes you can make your house, and not to keep that part of yeah. Katona the way that they like it. Yeah, and there, there is an extensive process that an applicant has to go through if they want to propose any of these types of uses that are permitted within the, uh, within the district. So I should know the answer. So when did we create that d d business historic district? Do you know? Uh, I Is don't part know. Was the master plan being finalized? No, it was, it was, I, it was I think it was before the master plan. Probably an early. It was probably yeah, an early. Um, it was fun. Yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah, I, 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 I've relied on Nancy Gurbino, who's on the planning board as kind of my historian because she's been here for, for a while and she and she indicated that this uh, district was created sometime uh, I, I want to say in the 70s or early 80s somewhere around there the 70s. Yeah. yeah so is this prospective I mean this would be for new, you know I mean is there any existing uh, sort of no uh, businesses that sort of fall into these categories no, no. so you're, you're not creating any, any non-conformities with respect to the zoning. 
Let me ask you another question then. You, you had mentioned the walkability. Mm -hmm. Now, I think you and I have had a conversation, I've had a conversation with the past planning director, and I've been saying this for a lot of years, the more it's walkable in town, I think the better town it is, and the more it enhances the property values of everyone who has, who has a house here and wants to sell it, because survey after survey says to young buyers, they're looking for a place they walk, we don't have the train coming into town, as they mm -hmm. want transportation, but they want that walkability. So I'm with you 100% on that. Yeah. Is there any, how do, how do we go about bringing that, you know, to fruition? I don't, I don't quite know what to do, and so, or what we can do. Uh, can you give me some insight into yeah, that? Yeah, I, I think part of it is, uh, if I remember correctly, the, some of the concepts are outlined in your comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. um, but a, a lot of it, need, because you have the state highway system, you need to coordinate with DOT. And a lot of it has to do with, can you create um, sidewalks or some pedestrian connections? That, that's what but, I'm looking for, yes. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, the, going to, to Chico's, the easiest way is to walk out here and then you walk down 100 and then yeah. that way. So it's kind of a very roundabout way. So there's, there are elements that are there already, but I think there are other pieces that could be filled in uh, to make that uh, more comprehensive. It would seem like connecting those places easily. So one doesn't, literally people drive across the street because it's easier than walking across the street. Are we looking at something, a sidewalk there? We're trying to get the money to do that? Yeah, well, I think yeah. that... It, I, I, it's it's part of the planning process so if it's outlined in your comprehensive plan or if you continue to uh, emphasize it that's another um, way to go after grant monies um, if you have other projects that that come in that um, that front on any of these major roads that those are opportunities to get the developer to participate uh, as part of this process as well well when Bonnie L put the uh, development down the street part mm -hmm. of that was to put mm -hmm. sidewalks at least mm -hmm. in parts of it. So right. it's somewhat like <clears throat> disconnected parts, but there are parts, but I want to connect them all. But it, you, you, at least you have a, a component that's there, and it's easier to connect it if, it's, if you ha already have something that's there. Yeah, you build so, on it. Right, exactly. I just want right. to build it on a little faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm counting on you to do. Okay. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, okay, so I'd like to then um, declare uh, declare ourselves lead agency. All right, and then we second. Okay. Um, refer the draft legislation to the planning board and Westchester County Planning Board. Second. All right. Um, and then uh, set a public hearing on the legislation for November tenth, twenty twenty-two. And Patty, I guess we moved all that that to the consent. No. We're moving it. Tonight. We're going to move it tonight. All right. So we'll. we'll uh, I'd like to make the motion to for all through those A, B, and C. I get a second. Second. Uh, all in favor? All right. Aye. So moved. And we, it's okay to do them all in one, Patty, right? Roland. Roland, do I need to do A, B, and C all individually, or can I do them all in one? Oh, it's okay to do them together. Okay. Good. Great. That would have been my Roland answer. And then. Um, Number 12, uh, addition to zoning tax amendment to the community shopping district. If uh, Dave, you want to give us an update on, on that as well. Sure. So if you recall, you had um, Wing Biddle from Erstat Biddle, who was before you um, was a couple months ago. Uh, so it, what he has um, expressed is that there's um, opportunities in some of his other facilities, if you recall, uh, to create um, this pet care doggy daycare uh, type of operation within uh, a commercial um, facility, like what he has at, at Somers Commons. Um, so he submitted a, a petition to uh, amend the zoning code to allow this as a, a specific use, a permitted use within the, uh, within the uh, CS Community Shopping District. So you have the specific language. Um, that would be added to the code. There's a definition for pet care services, and then uh, there are requirements for uh, site plan requirements for principal uses as, as a pet care for services with all the facilities and amenities within the building, and then if there are uh, facilities for um, pet care outside of the building. And there are requirements that are, and standards that are included with that. <clears throat> and we've used 
and looked at other regulations in other communities and how they've addressed this particular issue. Uh, so that's reflected in uh, the, um, the proposed amendments. So he was before us, and we all looked favorable upon us. I, I speak for mm -hmm. everybody, but we but there, uh, but he had to do some things that he was unaware of. I mean, to, to move this forward, right? First, that Biddle, does he have to? No, I don't think so. I think this We're is. We're going to just do this all schedule a public hearing, and that's yeah. Perfect. Well, he needed to. Um, he need, we, there, there needed to be a, an environmental assessment form prepared. One has been prepared. He needed to submit a petition, a letter, a formal petition. I That's did. been submitted. So those requirements that were asked of him had been okay. completed. So th those have all, all right, been done. Good. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I had one citizen say to me who, who followed this, said, I don't think you should do that. What are they going to do with it? So, I mean, these were just sort of the obvious. What happens with all these dogs that go in and out? Where are they going to go to the bathroom, right? Right on. The, what's he going to do about that? Who's cleaning it up? And I said, well, I, I didn't really think about this. You, the, good question. How, who, good question. Who decide, what happens there? Because you don't want to affect those businesses near it. Oh, of course not. No, he, he doesn't want to have that. There, there yeah, are, they're all his yeah, business. That, that's an operational. Right. Yeah, yeah that's an operational so aspect. Are those, yeah. those detailed sort of questions of the, the in and out and who cleans? And, you know, it's like we had tractor supply here, mm -hmm. right? So they want to put that up there, too. Right. And that's allowed now, I guess, or that is uh, it is allowed, but they need to get site plan approval. Yeah, right. So they're going to have a fence in there to, mm -hmm. I guess, at night, so things don't get stolen or right. something like that, to try to take care of it. I mean, those sorts of details that comes <clears throat> to the planning board, or do we yes, have... oh, that comes before the planning okay, board. So yes, they have that's to a site decide plan. Who's right. going to clean up the stuff, basically? Absolutely, yes. Okay, that's right. part right. of the plan. So okay. all the nuisance, the all the nuisance <laughs> aspects of of that. That's included That's in here. That's included right. in, in Okay. All right, good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. That was a good question. Mm -hmm. Wasn't mine. Wasn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll, uh, we'll do A, B, and C all together. So uh, A, we'll declare ourselves lead agency. B, refer the draft legislation to the Somers Planning Board and Westchester County Planning Board. And C, set public hearing on a legislation for November 10th, 2022. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, accept all, to do all three of those. I guess Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks, man. Appreciate good it. Good evening. You're welcome. All right. Brings us now to Parks and Rec. Uh, request approval to purchase a John Deere rotary, rotary tiller in the amount of $4,480.76 uh, on the New York landscaping grounds bid contract per memo dated September 22nd, 2022 from Steve Rawson. Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. Patty, let's move that to the consensus agenda, please. All right, request permission to accept a proposal from Pat Corsetti, Inc., for installation of Discovery Center playground piece for the Reese Park Tot playground in the amount of 4,500 per memo dated September 23rd, 2022, from Steve mm -hmm. Ross and Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. I'd like to move that to the consensus agenda as well. Number three, request permission to accept the proposal from North County Electric LLC for installation and upgrade electrical service to the Reese Park stage in the amount of 4,450 uh, per memo dated September 23rd, 2022 from Steve Ralston, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. I'd like to move that to the consensus agenda as well. Uh, highway, no financial, so let's go move to highway. Request permission to go uh, go to bid for 2023 materials for the highway department per memo dated September 13th, 2022 from Nicholas DeVito, superintendent of highways. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to requ uh, have request permission. Got a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's move that. So move. There is uh, no other personnel, but we do have some current vacancies. Oh, just one go thing. Ahead. So I would assume that includes salt. For the winter, I'm assuming. I would assume, yeah. And and we have a place to put that that shed. To we are our 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 time frame for the salt shed should be the November November first. That's the day we're shooting for that okay. first week of okay. November. We do have enough salt in reserves over at Yorktown. Um, if we do have a storm, uh, a couple of days worth of storms, we do have that. But our our goal and our and our uh, we are is to get this up for November. 
the salt chip. So, um, and then the salt will be delivered. Then the salt will be delivered. And, and we'll have a whole season's we'll, worth. We'll have a whole season's worth. But we are we are in good shape if okay. we have a couple of days worth of storms. Uh, Yorktown has been uh, very courteous to let us keep some salt over there. Oh, okay, that's nice. Then. Um, current vacancies: uh, Affordable Housing Board, one two-year term ending 7/11/2024. We have Assessment Board of Review. We have one five-year term ending 9/30/2023, which is ended. We have Assessment Board of Review, uh, one five-year term ending 9/30/2027. Uh, Sorry, uh, Library Board of Trustees. We have one five-year term ending 12/31/2025. Partners in Prevention, two three-year terms ending 12-31-2022, and Partners in Prevention, one three-year term ending 12-31-2023. There are some upcoming vacancies, terms expiring in 2022. Partners in Prevention, a two three-year term ending 12-31-2022. Planning Board, one seven-year term uh, ending 12-31-2022, and a Zoning Board of Appeals, two five-year terms ending 12-31-2022. Um, I also like to acknowledge the resignation of, of William P. Holtz the third road maintainer uh, of the Somers Highway Department effective uh, September 23rd, 2022. Uh, I'd like to get a motion to acknowledge the resignation. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank and then, for, thank you for your, for your service. service. Thank you for helping us, right? Yeah. And then we number four. The Go ahead, we all use the roads. Thank yeah. you for helping us. Authorize the hiring of Miss Karen uh, Nystrom as part-time uh, availability PTA chauffeur for the Somers Senior Adult Nutrition Department at an hourly rate of $17.50 per memo dated September 20, 2022 from Barbara Tabor, Seniors and Nutrition Program Director, effective September 26, 2022. I'd like to make a motion to authorize the hiring. Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Planning and engineering, there is no additional business. Police, there is no additional business. Um, proposed consensus agenda. Patty, before we do that, I'd like to just, um, number five, we're gonna move to a later date. Okay, and that gives us one through four. Uh, anybody have any discussions on those? One through four? Covered. Okay, great. And uh, our calendar. Wow, that takes us pretty. Uh, On number four. Go ahead. I would assume with Mr. Messina, he, the gentleman, um, obviously, uh, who used to come to us with that, unfortunately, has passed away. I would assume it's the same thing, same sign, same everything. Same. Yeah. Same. Okay. Yeah, same. Yeah. Apparatus. Same apparatus. Okay, good. Thank exact you. same display. And the calendar for uh, 2022, right? So um, October 13th at 7 p.m., our, our next town board regular meeting. October 18th and, yeah. and October 20th, we will have our de department budget hearings. Marathon sessions. That is marathon sessions, yes. <laughs> November 10th, 2022, we, at 7 p.m., our town board work session and our regular meeting. Uh, December 1st, 2022, 7 yep. p.m., our town board work session. And then again, December 8th, 7 p.m., our town board regular meeting. Um, we do have some announcements here. Uh, things that are happening here in October. Somers Bulk uh, Refuge Drop-Off is Saturday, October 15th. Um, and that is... And then again, uh, is, it, is that through November 12th? Through. Through? It, oh, it goes through, yeah. Through November 12th, 2022. That's Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then Saturday, 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's City Carding and Recycling, um, 241 Route 100 across from the Highway Department, which is now also known as Win Waste. E-Waste Recycling Day, which will be on Saturday, October 15th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., Somers Intermediate School, 240 Route 202, Somers, New York. $10 per car donation to help keep Somers beautiful. Somers Library Foundation, race to support our library at Sunday, October 16th. And that is 9.30 uh, a.m. Uh, start of the race at that Reese Park, 82 Primrose Street, run, jog, walk, volunteer, or cheer. Westchester County Mobile Shredder coming back again to Somers. That is Tuesday, October 18th. That's 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And it's at Reese Park, 
um, 82 Primrose Street last year. It was on up in Upper Reese. We had so many cars that the line was almost um, to the main road. YMC. So where is it this year? This is at Reese Park. So upper, same place. Probably Upper Reese again. Yeah, I want to see if we're going to have it up there. I think yeah. that worked out better than when they were in the lower parking lot by the tennis court. Yeah, because it makes it people can go up there and then turn uh, it around. Seems, it seems it it's, seemed it's more effective. Okay. Uh, YMCA of Central and Northern Westchester Halloween Parade, oh. Sunday, October 23rd. 2.15 p.m. is the lineup, 2.30. They mm -hmm. step off Reese Park, 82 Primrose Street. Uh, it's a free family event, trunk or treat games, trunk and, treat. and then there'll be a costume <laughs> contest. It's very efficient for the kids. Trunk, trunk and it treat. is, trunk yeah. or treat. They just go up to the people, trunk pop their trunks yeah. up, and the kids trunk walk in there. Treat. You never heard that before? Yeah. <laughs> You know? That's funny. Yeah, so that'd be, uh, be <laughs> it's a it's a trunk or treat. So and then also again, fun. like to just stress again that uh, our food scraps recycling is is here in the town of Somers. Uh, we don't uh, uh, supply uh, countertop bins or compostable bags, but you're able to purchase them on Amazon. So last Sunday, I went down to Bedford. And they had a energy, you know, they have a very active program, and uh, they have an energy manager, I think they call himself, energy coordinator, a uh, gentleman who's been involved in this. He used to be head of Energize New York for the state, so he obviously knows his stuff. Um, and so I was talking to him about a variety of things. I was looking at electric cars, electric this, electric that, uh, and um, so then I was asking about the food scrap program, and he's so he's over in Lewisboro. Now they have what I think is a pretty good idea. I'm going to go over there. Uh, I believe it's, uh, I think it's Tuesday. I'm supposed to go over there. Um, and what they do is they sell the countertop, the the compostable bags. Not, uh, they're not um, biodegradable bags. They're compostable. There's a big difference, apparently. And then the thing underneath the seat, and they sell it all as one item to people who come in and the town sells them at cost and so uh he said you know that's worked out great for us if you want to give it a try so you just got to kind of yeah. organize it so i'm going to go over and see it I'll, I'll i'll buy i'll buy one and then i'll uh, tell everybody how it how it is might be might be a way for us i'm just worried about people throwing in plastic bags unwittingly as i would have with a you know biodegradable bag isn't that what you want and so i would have done that it might be a way for us to. Uh, might be a way for us to do this too. Because uh, you know, I went over there the other day. I actually was looking in the cans to see how it was doing, and people were very good. There was no just garbage in there. <laughs> the people awesome. who did it, they 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 were doing the right stuff in there. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to mention that because I went down to Bedford to see it. Uh, Great. If you just re uh, let, us, let us know. Yeah. Well, we'll I'll do that. Yeah. 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 I was just reminded of it by you. Bill, anything else from you? Yeah, uh, tomorrow night, uh, Somers goes to Clarkstown to continue their march for another title, hopefully. <laughs> so come out and support the Tuskers. Go Somers. Nice. Anthony? You know, I just want to mention uh, oh, last weekend, uh, you know, my family, we uh, did a march and a walk uh, for support connection at FDR Park. Um, Carol's on the board. Support connection has helped, uh, has worked with us. They're on our community council as well. It's a great course. Uh, you know, Support Connection provides free emotional, social, and educational support for people impacted by breast, ovarian, and gynecological cancer. And through one-on-one -on -one, uh, you know, counseling sessions and with uh, professional counselors who are cancer survivors themselves, um, they provide the goal of you know, comforting, empowering, empowering, and educating people that run into something like this and just need somebody to talk to about the process and the life. And they not only do this, you know, for the ladies, they're all doing this for the families and the men as well. It's a great organization. They run out of, uh, out of Yorktown. Um, they're regional, and they actually do some, you know, national work. You call them, they'll, they'll spend time with you. I heard great things about it. It's, it's, it's an awesome, it's an awesome uh, you, know, um, uh, you, you know, organization. And, of course, you know, fundraising is a big part of what they do. And, uh, you know, it's always important to encourage people just to go, you know, take a look at their website. But if anybody's running into something similar, like an issue like that, give them a call. You know, yep. you can find them on the web. Uh, and uh, I guess.
office. If you call the supervisor's office, you'll have the information. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got a lot of phone calls here in the office, and uh, uh, we're more than happy to take your phone calls, and we're more than happy to uh, help in any way we can. Um, don't be don't be afraid to to reach out, and um, and if you have a have an issue or a problem or, or something that you uh, like to talk to someone about, we're more than happy happy to uh, Connect answer the phone you, yeah. and talk to you. Um, that being said, I'd like to make a motion to uh, close our October 6, 2022 uh, work session uh, town board meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved.